Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I mentioned in a couple of videos that I was out in Las Vegas over the holidays. And while I was out there, I took the opportunity to take advantage of something that I don't have here in Michigan, mountains. And I thought it would be a nice time to kind of put to rest this idea that pressure changes with altitude are due to something called Gay-Lussac's Law, and they're related to temperature and not gravity. Now, Gay-Lussac's Law is a derivation of the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. And specifically, it looks at the relationship between pressure and temperature. Now, as you can see, if you have a system of gases and you change the pressure and the temperature, notice that the pressure and the temperature form a fraction. And that relationship goes to the new pressure and temperature. So in order for this to stay true, if you decrease the temperature, you have to decrease the pressure and vice versa. And that's what this means over here. Pressure and temperature are proportional to each other. So my wife and I decided to go have lunch at the resort on Mount Charleston. This is listed in Google's Earth as the retreat on Mount Charleston, but they're the same location. Now, in order to get the best measurements, I decided that I was going to use my iPhone to obtain pressure and temperature data. And an iPhone has a sensor that can directly read air pressure and temperature. And what I did is as we went in for lunch, I left my iPhone in the unheated car. And I cracked all the windows to make sure that we had good air exchange. What I wanted to do is I wanted to let the iPhone settle to ambient temperature. Then we went in and had a very nice lunch, met a really cool cat. And then about an hour later, we came outside and started the observations. So here's Google Earth. And right here, you'll see the airport in Las Vegas. This is the Las Vegas Strip, and the stratosphere is up in that general area. Now, what we did was we left North Las Vegas, and we headed out here towards Mount Charleston. And right here is the resort at Mount Charleston. Let me zoom in on that a little bit. So here's the building. Here's where that really cool cat was. Here's where the restaurant is. And we were parked about right here. The sign is located right here. And let's go ahead and see some shots from the ground. And here we go. And as you can see from the sign there, you can clearly see my location. I was just below that little retaining wall. Now our plan was to establish a baseline temperature and pressure at this location and then drive up the mountain measuring temperatures and pressures until we got up to where we wanted to be, about 7,500 feet. And then we drove all the way back down to Las Vegas, which is about 2,900 feet or so. Now, the interesting thing about this drive is that they had elevation markers every 1,000 feet. So we were able to get benchmark altitudes and take readings. Now, during this observation, I found that Google Earth, my phone, and the markers on the side of the road all varied by a little bit, but they were all within about 100 feet of each other. And given the altitude, that's about 1 60th of the altitude. So I didn't feel that was that significant. However, for consistency's sake, I decided that I was going to use the altitude given by my phone for all the observations so that we were comparing apples to apples. So here at the resort at Mount Charleston, we've got a altitude of 6,635 feet, and we have an atmospheric pressure of 23.663 inches of mercury. Now, let's go up the hill. Okay, so here we are again at the resort at Mount Charleston. This is on Kyle Canyon Road. So we went ahead and we pulled out of the parking lot here, and we made a left turn and went up Kyle Canyon Road. And we continued to go up until we got to this little community up on Mount Charleston. And here's our reading up on Mount Charleston at 7,509 feet, 64 degrees Fahrenheit compared to 63 down in the valley a little bit. And our pressure reading is 22.869 inches of mercury. So we've gone down oh, a little bit less than one inch of mercury when we went up right around 1,000 feet. Now a good rule of thumb in aviation is that as you increase your altitude 1,000 feet, the ambient pressure will drop one inch of mercury, so you need to increase your manifold pressure. 
So coming down Kyle Canyon Road, I stopped at the elevation sign for 4,000 feet and I took another reading. As you can see, uh, the altimeter on my phone is reading 3,975 feet, so pretty consistent. And the pressure is 26.120 inches of mercury. More importantly, look at that temperature. 63 degrees and approximately 15% relative humidity, which is the same as it was on top of the mountain. At the restaurant, I believe it was 64 degrees and about 25% relative humidity, but you can check that. And then the last reading was in North Las Vegas at the Chocolate Factory. Wonder why we went there. And as you can see, the altitude is 2,863 feet. The pressure is 27.208 inches of mercury. But most importantly, the temperature is 64 degrees. So we have very consistent temperatures throughout this entire observation. Okay, so let's go ahead and have a look at the results. So our current understanding of the pressure gradient is that we have a external force of gravity acting upon the mass of the atmosphere and performing work on it. This external force modifies the behavior of the gas, which would normally uh, expand in all directions to have a preferred direction, and that preferred direction is in the direction of the vector of gravity downward. It subsequently contains the atmosphere and sets up an atmospheric pressure gradient. And that pressure gradient is a decrease in atmospheric pressure, one inch of mercury, every 1,000 feet. The alternative hypothesis is the Gay-Lussac's law promoted by the flat earth, specifically Witsit. In his reasoning, the decrease in pressure with altitude is due to a decrease in temperature, and the pressure is proportionate to the temperature. Now looking at our pressure and temperature readings, we have at 7,509 feet, we have 22.869 inches of mercury and 64 degrees Fahrenheit. At 6,635 feet, we have 23.663 inches of mercury 62 degrees, 2 degrees colder. At just under 4,000 feet, 3,975 feet, we've got 26.120 inches of mercury and a temperature of 63 degrees. And at 2,863 feet, we got 27.208 inches of mercury and a temperature of 64 degrees. So under Gay-Lussac's law, in order for the pressure to go down as it did, the temperature would have to go down. In our examination, the temperature did not decrease, but the pressure did significantly. Disproving things in science is rather easy. We can use formal deductive reasoning. However, demonstrating things in science requires inductive reasoning, and it never gives us a proof. It just says the data is supported. So in this case, the GLOBE model is gravity, acting on mass of atmosphere, causing pressure gradient of one inch of mercury every 1,000 feet. We did indeed have a decrease in atmospheric pressure of one inch of mercury every 1,000 feet. So our findings are entirely consistent with the GLOBE model because we did indeed have a decrease in atmospheric pressure of approximately one inch of mercury for every 1,000 feet that we ascended or descended up and down Mount Charleston. So while this doesn't prove gravity, it doesn't prove anything. It does suggest that the GLOBE model, which predicted it, is correct. It is supporting evidence of that model. However, it does disprove the hypothesis that pressure changes are due to Gay-Lussac's law and changes in temperature. So this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And remember, we've got that telescope fun there. Have a look at it. See what you think. Take care, everyone, and see you soon.